Okay, so we just talked, you know, I think it was back in April when you were eliminated. You did back-to-back seasons, which is, I think it's rare. Only like nine people have done that. Um, and it seemed to finally catch up to you last night, didn't it? We, we all saw you collapse at that immunity challenge. Ah, uh, yeah, man, it uh, it got me. They, the game, the game won this time. <laughs> what was it like There's for a, you watching that on TV last night? Um, you know, it was it was it was really rough. Actually, I'd, I'd be lying to you if, it, if I said it wasn't. Um, my, you know, we had a, my whole family was here at, at my folks' house, and it mm-hmm. was it was emotional. It was it was it was tough going from that emotional high to, I mean, the highest high to the lowest low in the game within 24 hours and then getting to watch it, you know, in about 20 minutes. Um, it was, it was tough. It, it, I definitely relived it and I'm still kind of reliving it a little bit, but it's, it's, it's bad. <laughs> it's a tough, yeah. tough thing to Did watch. You pre- um, sorry, Did you prepare your family like, like- like, hey guys, just so you know, I might faint, but I'm okay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't imagine. What they, they are. <laughs> no, they're they are um, as ignorant as any of the other fans. I do not mm-hmm. tell them. I'm mean, going maybe not ignorant is the right word, but they are in the dark. Um, mm-hmm. I don't tell. I haven't told my family anything. I don't tell them how many. You know, I didn't tell them challenges that I won or didn't win. I didn't tell them who got hurt. You know, everyone's like, are those your hands? I'm sure those are your hands, and they go back and they're watching it over and over and over again, and asking me to see my hands. I'm like, no, you guys, just watch it. You guys just you know, be like everyone else. So, it, but it's cool. I, I mean, because I enjoy watching their expressions and seeing the happy and the sad too, just and having them feel it and get to live that with me a little bit and go on this emotional roller coaster with me. So. It's 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 cool. It's 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 been a really cool thing for my family. Mm-hmm. You know, the loved ones visit is always the highlight of every single season. Um, I'm wondering what does that do for you guys in terms of reinvigorating your game out there? Oh, Marcus, it's huge. It's um, it really. I mean, uh, for me, obviously, it's a little different. Uh, just because I've wanted this for so long, and. I finally, you know, I'm I'm li- getting to live my vivid dreams that I've had as since a kid. Uh, so there's this emotional reassurance. You know, you're having someone out there that you love, that you care about, that you trust. I mean, you've been we've we've been with these other contestants now for about forty, I don't know, like forty two days now. I think out just you're alone. You have no one to trust and talk to. So just having someone there that loves you or and that you can just – that's just there for you um, is mm-hmm. huge. And it boosts your morale. It boosts your confidence. It, um, you know, it, or, but on the flip side, it can also hurt you. It can, it can distract you from the game um, because that was something I battled was I was so badly wanting to um, – share this moment with my dad and and live this experience and have him really just soak it up and, and enjoy the moment. But I have the game going on. You know, you have mm-hmm. the three people back at camp who don't have their loved ones. And, and that's a really tough thing to balance. And, and if you don't keep it in check, like, for example, look at what Spence and Tosh and Jeremy just did. They kind of locked in a final – Three alliance for this vote to get mm-hmm. me out. So that's, I mean, that's huge gameplay that I really didn't see as maybe well as I should have because I was bl- not blinded by my loved one, but just because my, <laughs> I was going through a lot of different emotions over here and not able to separate out, you know, that from the game. Right. Um, you won, I think it was four in a row, right? Immunity challenges. And you probably would have won a fifth if you hadn't collapsed. And that just brings up an interesting question. If you were the other players, would you have voted out Joe as well? Um, definitely. <laughs> I, would have, I, would have, I would have definitely uh, voted me out as well. Yeah, I think um, just for that moment, for, for the, 
because, like I think Kelly said it the best, when you have your shot, when you have someone that's pushing that hard to win, that's the scary – I mean, just that alone, the willpower is scarier than mm-hmm. maybe the actual result. So, um, I mean, that's you know, it's, and it's a, it's a compliment in a way, but it's still it's it's not because this ultimately you're trying to make it to the end of the game and win. So, um, I was I was just I was, I didn't you know me and Keith are just competitors. We like to we like mm-hmm. to push each other. We didn't want it was not not to say it's like this little father son you know thing, but but I really did I res- I love and respect Keith to death, and and that's one thing that. I loved about him was he made me a better competitor. You know, he pushed me Mm -hmm. to be, to play harder. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's, everything's a double-edged sword. You know, if I don't compete, then people say, well, you went out there and you didn't compete and you, you weren't trying your hardest. Well, yeah, but if I do go out there and try my hardest, I might not win because I'm not trying my hardest or like, or I'm not, it's not strategically in in my best benefit. So, mm-hmm. and, you know, right. all about perception and how you look at it. And speaking of Keith, he is a great physical competitor, but he's not really playing a strategic game, at least not what, what we're seeing. Um, mm. is, he, is he kind of floating along, just getting in the right alliances, you think? Well, I'll, I'll flip it on you. So mm-hmm. in his first season, he, quote, unquote, didn't really play a very strategic game. And how far did he get? It was the final what four? Mm-hmm. He made the four. So mm-hmm. if that is his strategy to not play strategy, is that a strategy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just like in the in the kind of obtuse because in the beginning, I think he he goes uh he says you know I made the final four. I I don't I don't have to do a lot, maybe tweak a little bit, but I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. And that's but that's Keith's game. He isn't a threat because he's not this big strategizer, but that gets him really far in the game, and that is mm-hmm. a strategy. So it's it's like it's brilliant. It's, it's actually it's like really smart because he doesn't have to overthink everything, and he just kind of goes with the flow, and that's not threatening. And that's how you get to the final four, and then you win one immunity, and now you're in the final three, and now you win the game. So it's just kind of one of those things like is it a strategy is he is he really not playing strategically or is he and he just is playing dumb he's just playing Keith Nail golly I love him (laughs) (laughs) Um, I I asked this to Stephen last week and it seemed to work so I'll ask you the same question you're doing a Mm -hmm. ton of exit interviews this morning is there anything you you haven't been asked yet that you really wanted to get off your chest oh wow that's a that's a curveball um you know, I think uh, I think a lot of people are wondering, you know, how like me and Abby's relationship maybe after the game, and yeah. or just after you know where we're at because there was a lot there was a lot of interaction. I mean, there's so much as you know. I mean, the the viewers and the fans are only getting like one percent of all that's going on out there. So, you know, I love I love everyone on this cast. I respect the hell out of every one of them and i mean me and abby we got along a lot and then there's times when she butts heads with people and creates unnecessary drama for herself and for others like that's how i felt in the game and you know after the fact like love her to death it's it's a game we're all throwing each other under the bus and we're all doing the same stuff so i have no i have no hard feelings against abby like she's She's Abby. You know, you know exactly. You go, oh yeah, Abby Maria. Know exactly who you're talking about. So, <laughs> yeah, you, we're all we're all our own colors, man. <laughs> um, when you watch the episodes back on TV, and you, you see someone like Stephen Fishback, who's literally gunning for you from week one, did that surprise mm-hmm. you, or did you did you know he was kind of coming after you? Um, it, it didn't really surprise me. Um. So my kind of strategy going into this season was what is everyone's second chance story and what is the the bigger, you know, what is, what is the, the deeper thing that everyone is going to fix from their first season? So, and it was pretty, 
I think it's pretty telling with most people. You know, what did everyone do that they didn't do, or, and how would they change it? So I knew for Steven, Steven made it to the end with JT. JT was the quote-unquote likable golden boy, and I was the parallel. I was that that, you know, his, as you said, the uh, Moby Dick and the big white way, like, I was that for him, so I knew that that was going to be his goal, was he was going to go after a big, could have been Jeremy, could have been myself, could have been Savage, like, in the, you know, in the beginning of the game, one of us was the big powerhouses that he was going to go after, so it was, I, I expected it, but I still tried to work with him. I, you asked Steven. I, I was, we were playing each other pretty good. We were trying to work with each other and then we were going after each other, but it's just, oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful game. Well, thanks so much. I have to run to, to other interviews. It was great watching you again, and if you could come back for a third season, would you do it? Woof! Third one? Uh yeah, brother. I think I think uh, I think I would. I mean, we'll have to we'll have to talk locations. I might I might ask for like you know California beaches instead of Cambodia <laughs> beaches or something. But uh, we'll have to we'll have to we'll have to talk. Yeah, definitely definitely would do it again. But I lo- I mean, my heart's in the game. I, I I really do. I love love this show. So I'll probably I don't know. Who knows how many times I might get to play it? But hopefully, as many as as uh, Jeff will let me. So, nice. All right, we'll see you at the reunion in a couple weeks. Awesome. Sounds good, brother. Okay, take care. Okay.